Well, today we're talking about how to make the EOS R the perfect vlogging camera. Let's get into it. What's up, my name is Tony and I'm a filmmaker photographer in the St. Louis area. Today we are hanging out at the park, going for a little walk, and I figured I would just take you along with me and kind of explain to you how we can use the EOS R as a uh, really, really good vlogging camera. I mean, really, it's set up for success. It's got that flippy out screen, it's got a full frame sensor, it's a pretty small body. I mean, honestly, it works really well as a vlogging camera. And uh, when I first started my YouTube channel, a lot of what I did was vlogging. And uh, the reason why is because you can learn a lot from vlogging. But uh, lately I've been doing a little bit more tutorial kind of training stuff. So I figured I would make just a quick little video on uh, how to vlog while I'm walking around. And I'll, we'll talk about kind of reasons why it's so important. Uh, we'll talk about the gear setup, how to kind of equip your EOS R appropriately. And then we'll talk about some of the settings that I use in my camera. So let's hang out a little bit. Alright, well I'm at the park and look at this. Things are finally starting to change. So exciting. I'm so ready for spring. I'm just ready to get outside and, and have fun. So uh, so I'm just pushing it, man. I mean, it's it's like 45 degrees, which isn't bad, but uh, it's time for, for spring to come. And uh, the trees are just starting to bud and everything's good, but uh, we're not quite there yet. Every now and then we get a cold day like today, which it's like, it's like mid 40s, so it's not bad to be outside. So let's talk about vlogging. Like I said, my channel kind of started out with vlogging and uh, I've just recently switched over to more tutorial stuff because uh, I just love to equip people. But honestly, like there's lots of reasons why you should be vlogging. Uh, as a creator, I really think that it helps push you to be more creative because it's all about story. It's all about helping people see your perspective. And uh, I think that it helps you get used to being in front of the camera and talking through what's happening in your life and a byproduct of that is that you've got these little videos that you've made of memories that you probably would forget if uh, if you hadn't have caught it on video and so you know I just think it's really cool to be able to talk to the camera and kind of work through what's going on in your life I think it just helps me slow down a little bit and uh, just kind of just kind of soak in a little bit more of the memory that's happening so those are some of the reasons why I just really think that uh, you should be vlogging and if you've got the EOS R you're already starting with a really good camera to be able to do this so let's talk through some of the, the uh, gear that I use for vlogging like this setup right now uh, obviously I'm using the EOS R and uh, Really the only attachment I have on the camera besides the lens is a microphone. I'm using the Rode Video Micro, which is the best microphone ever. I mean, I've bought the uh, more expensive ones. They just, this one doesn't require batteries. It's tiny, it's 60 bucks. It comes with a windscreen. I mean, so many great things about this microphone that I just, uh, I just love. So if you wanna spend a little bit more, more money, you can buy the, uh, the Rode Video Mic NTG that just came out. It's a really nice microphone and it has really great sounding audio. But the problem is is that uh, every now and then it when I turn on the camera, it's supposed to have like an auto on and off and sometimes it doesn't always turn on, which uh, is fine for me if I'm doing like a studio style, if I need something a little bit better audio, but for run and gun, uh, that, just, that just worries me that there's gonna be times when it doesn't turn on because I've had a couple clips that were ruined. I was doing something yesterday and I can't use it because because the audio didn't turn on. So, uh, I mean, it's not perfect, but but it uh, it is a really, really good solid microphone. So, my suggestion is if you haven't already, you need to pick up one of these video micros. They're so good. I mean, it just sounds great, does a great job with run and gun style, with vlogging, things like that. So pick up one of these Rode Video Micros. The other thing that you want to use is you want to use a wide angle lens. Right now, this is the 10 to 18, and I think it looks pretty good. I've got a little bit of ability to zoom in, get a little bit of background blur, all that fun stuff. Um, 
The 10 to 18 is an EFS lens, and I made a video a couple weeks ago about using EFS lenses with your EOS R, and honestly, they work really well. In fact, I can even uh, shoot 4K. Watch this, I'll switch to 4K. So this is 4K. You can see there's not hardly any crop on there extra. There really isn't. And so it's really nice to be able to shoot in 4K. I typically don't just because the 1080 looks really good. Let's go, let's go back to 1080. And the file sizes are just huge when it comes to, to 4K. But it looks really good. And with an EF lens, you can actually use the 4K without any crop, when it, any extra crop. It has the 1.6 crop because it's a crop sensor lens. So uh, biggest downfall with this is using as a vlog lens is you can't ever switch to, to 60 frames per second which kind of sucks but it is what it is now if you don't want to buy an EFS lens uh, and you don't want to spend a lot of money um, other option is just use a 24 to 105 I mean at an f4 you like you really don't need a lot of uh, of like aperture like you don't need a really fast lens you don't need a 1.4 or whatever I mean it's nice to have it but you really just don't need it because you're focusing on story and so don't get distracted by having a really low aperture because then you're always going to be worrying about focus you're always going to be worrying about depth of field all of that stuff so it's one of the reasons I love that 10 to 18 even though it's like an f4 to 6 really doesn't bother me so same with the 24 to 105 you can use 24 to 105 uh, do you want to see what that looks like here we go this is with the 24 to 105 now and boom this is 24 to 105 and I mean it still looks pretty good I have to hold my hand out a little bit farther uh, but honestly I mean it's a heavy lens compared to that 10 to 18 so uh, I, I mean you can use the 24 to 105 if you don't want to spend a lot of money and you've got one of those laying around which which honestly is such a great lens I should do a uh, I should do a video on that lens just because I love it so much all right let's go back to the 10 to 18 I know this is a process but here we go Okay, and we are back on the 10 to 18. Man, this is so much lighter than the uh, 24 to 105. So, anyways, you could use your 24 to 105 if you got one of those laying around and you didn't want to buy an extra lens, especially an EFS lens. I get it. But for vlogging, super light, super small. You've got a little bit of zooming in that you can do if you need, and uh, it's just a it's just a nice little setup. The only thing, the other thing that I have for gear is uh, I just put together a little handle. And what I use is a ball head mount that came on an old tripod and a uh, just a little Ronin stand that I had an extra one. If you, if you wanna get one of these, they're like 30 bucks on B&H, but it makes it really nice. I know some people use Gorilla Pods and there's other options, but I mean, it just seemed like a lot of money and a lot of people have trouble with Gorilla Pods. So I just found something that I can hold out the camera a little bit farther. And that's really just bottom line. So. Uh, when it comes to gear, that's that's really it. So let's talk about settings real quick. Um, I shoot in 24 frames per second when I'm talking to the camera. Like this right now, 24 frames per second. Um, if somebody else is talking to the camera, if I'm doing an interview, all of those kind of things, 24 frames per second. The only other time that I don't shoot in 24 frames per second is if I want some slow-mo. And uh, I don't shoot in 120, hardly ever. And it has to be really epic and something's moving really fast for me to do 120 because I just don't, I don't think it's worth it and it's kind of a pain to use. So 24 frames per second. Just set your camera on that and uh, I shoot in all eye if that matters to you. Some people don't, they shoot in IPB. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I mean, file sizes don't really matter to me. I'd rather have the depth to be able to uh, adjust the footage with coloring and whatnot in post. So I shoot in all eye. So now that we have that established, the other setting that you should uh, watch is your white balance. A lot of times I will just use auto because you're moving in and out of rooms and different things and it just, you can get distracted. So I'll use auto setting. Um, you can manipulate the situation a little bit. So say you want it to feel warm and hot and sunny and then just crank up that white balance a little bit. Maybe use cloudy instead of sunny or maybe you want to feel a little bit colder and then you're going to go a little bit cooler like 5,000, 4,500, whatever that, that looks like for you. But you can play around with that a little bit. You can also do some of that in post because the file sizes are so big and, and really good to work with with Canon. So uh, so you can, you can adjust your white balance a little bit in post as well. So... Most of the time I use auto and it just kind of adjusts with me and I don't have to worry about it then. Um, as far as picture profiles, I either shoot in standard or neutral or faithful. Mostly faithful. I really like faithful or neutral. Uh, but every now and then I'll, I'll jump into standard. And with vlogs, 
I never shoot in, in log just because I like some of the auto settings that you can use with a picture profile and it's typically a little bit faster video turnaround so uh, I just use a picture profile I don't shoot in log and I just don't worry about it so nice and simple then really the other settings that you have to worry about is your uh, look at this big mud puddle here it's kind of gross but I'm trying to avoid it um, is your exposure triangle so if you're not familiar with the exposure triangle, there's three points on the triangle, your shutter speed, your aperture, and your uh, ISO. And basically, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, I lock that shutter speed at 1 50th, and I don't ever move it. Never. I don't ever move it. Then typically what I'll do is I'll leave my aperture wide open at 4.5 with this lens. Uh, if I'm shooting on a 2.8, I'll shoot it at 2.8, but I may need to bump it up just because um, if you the the lower your f-stop is, the harder your autofocus has to work, and uh, I would rather not worry about my autofocus, so I bump it up in between 2.8 and maybe four and a half somewhere in there. Then I don't really have to worry about um, my face being in focus. The camera just tracks it really fast, and that makes sense because if there's a smaller focus depth then the camera has to work harder and chances are your face is going to go out, out of focus if you're shooting in 1.4, 1.8 or whatever that is. I just bump it up a little bit and I don't have to worry about it. Then the other setting that you have to worry about then is your ISO and so what I do is I just put it on the auto ISO then you don't have to worry about it and uh, when you walk into a darker room the light goes up when you go outside light goes down. So now the only time that really becomes a problem is when uh, it's really sunny out and then you have to use an ND filter which I'm doing right now even when it's I mean it's sunny out but it's not it's not it's kind of overcast it's not really sunny um, there's another really huge mud puddle yuck um, I've got the ND filter on minimum and then I put my ISO on auto and those are my settings I don't have to worry about it really if I go into a dark spot or things change I mean it just kind of automatically adjust now there's times when that gets tricky and you walk into a room with the skies really bright behind you and you're really dark so then you just crank up your ISO and I've got my control ring set up to that another way to easily do that is put it on this um, multifunction button right next to your shutter speed there's plenty of ways to adjust uh, ISO or all your settings in camera uh, pretty fast so just find a system that works for you so that you can adjust that ISO when it does freak out because at the end of the day the camera's smart, but it doesn't know what you want as a creative decision. And so, uh, you know, I encourage you to use some of your auto settings, but, but don't rely on them. Like, you have to understand why the camera is doing what it is to be able to fix the problem. Cool. All right. Well, like I said, I just encourage you guys. It's really fun to vlog and uh, just talk to the camera a little bit and get used to it. And uh, it takes time because, bottom line, it's all about story. It's all about telling your story to the world and uh, don't let the camera get in the way of that. Just tell your story and continue to improve that craft more than anything. Don't get caught up on gear, don't get caught up on systems or whatever. Figure out how to make your life interesting and tell that story. All right guys, we just keep walking around. Man, there's so much like trash. You just don't see the trash in the summer because uh, of all the green but we need to have a, a day where we just clean up this this park so all right guys thanks for hanging out with me hope this is uh, really helpful information if it is like the video uh, subscribe if you haven't already we're having a lot of fun and uh, I'm gonna just continue to invest in you and equip you with good videos to help you become a better filmmaker because I love doing it so subscribe to me if, uh, if that's something that you're interested in or uh, if you like getting a little adventurous. Cool. All right, guys. Have a good week. We'll see you next time.